Hi guys, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the 112. Now, if you follow my Twitch stream, you'll know that I've play at this tank a lot. In fact, for a lot of streams I played two, maybe even three games in this tank, uh, mainly because I didn't get the ace tanker. I finally got it, and it was done off stream uh, on Severgorsk, and as a result I don't feel compelled to play the tank anymore, mainly because I don't like it. I really don't think the 112 is a good tank, and as per usual with my tier 8 premium tanks, it's going to take me a while to get to the tier 8s and review them on YouTube, so I'm going to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about the tank. The 112 is the Chinese tier 8 premium heavy tank, and I don't think it's very good. Um, this tank has some strengths and it's got a hell of a lot of weaknesses. I'm not saying you can't do well in this tank, I can't, I'm can't. i not saying that you can't have monster games in the tank, I'm just saying that uh, a lot of it is uh, situational. Um, the 112 really, really benefits from matchups where uh, you get into games with players who aren't very experienced or aren't very good, uh, because any experienced player is going to be able to tear you apart in a 112, and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. I'll explain why. Um, well, the 112 on paper has amazing frontal armor. In fact, even tier 10s are going to have problems penning a 112 from the front, mainly at distance, but uh, it's got amazing sloping on the upper front plate, and it's pretty much an auto-bound zone for most guns in the game. Its frontal turret armor is also pretty good. However, while you would think this makes it a decent tank, as I say, only inexperienced players are going to be shooting you in the front of the turret or your upper front plate. Most experienced players are going to uh, shoot you in the lower glacis. And why are you going to shoot a 112 in the lower glacis? Well, because practically every single tank in the gun can penetrate a 112 in the lower glacis. I have been penned by PZ38NAs shooting at my lower glacis. Okay, well, a lot of tanks have lower, weak lower glacis. What's the big issue? Well, the big issue is that it's a Chinese tank. And unfortunately, like a lot of German tanks, but even more so in a Chinese tank or a 112, is shots through the lower glacis will set you on fire. In fact, shots don't even have to hit your lower glacis. You can be set on fire with shots through the side, shots through the rear, or shots onto your engine deck. This tank goes on fire very, very easily. Now, you can limit the chance of fire by installing equipment on the tank, making sure you have a fire extinguisher or maybe a premium fire extinguisher, and having a crew with the uh, fire extinguisher skill. But that, for me, defeats the point of having a tier 8 premium tank. I use my premium tanks to train up crews, and if I've got to build a crew specifically for the 112 in order to try and counteract the fact it goes on fire so much, um, that just defeats the purpose. I really don't see the point. So you may be asking yourself, well, okay, a lot of tanks have weak lower glacises. Maybe you can go hull down in this tank. Yes, yes, you can go hull down. But the problem with going hull down and hiding your weak lower glacis is you have two very, very prominent weak spots on top of the tank. You've got the machine gun port or the turret here, and you've got a viewport or commander's hatch here. Any experienced player is going to know to shoot you there if they can't shoot your lower glacis. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this tank really, really benefits from playing against inexperienced players. Uh, if you can't hide your lower glacis, you're going to die. And if you do hide your lower glacis, experienced players are going to be able to pen your turret by hitting you in the uh, weak spots. Another problem for the 112 is the weak side armor. Uh, it makes side scraping in this tank quite difficult. I'm not saying it can't be done, your tracks will eat some shots, but a lot of guns in the game are going to be able to penetrate and overmatch the armor on the side of your tank, even when you're trying to side scrape. Um, really, really, really don't like the armor profile on this tank. But the bad news doesn't stop there. Unfortunately, like most Chinese tanks, this thing is armed with a 122mm gun, which means that you've got 175mm of penetration, which is fine in a lot of situations, but it is lacking, especially up against tier 9s, and especially up against a lot of other tier 8 heavies. Um, also, because it's Chinese, the alpha damage is nice at 390, but also because it is Chinese, it means that the 
shell velocity is slower than it is on Russian 112s. It also means that the uh, shots will drop penetration. They'll, they'll lose penetration when fired over distance. So even if you do manage to hit a target at distance, the penetration is that much lower and you'll tend to bounce the shot a lot more frequently than you would with a Russian 112. And as per usual, as with most Chinese tanks, uh, yeah, you've got no gun depression either, or very, very poor gun depression. So, uh, I really, really can't recommend this tank. I'm not saying you can't have good games in it, but I think there are far, far better tier 8 premiums. So, we are here on Severgorsk. It's a 51% or a very, very close game. The teams are very, very evenly balanced, actually. Let's go. So very, very close game, and I decide I'm going to go over and work the 9-0 lines, because I reckon that's where a lot of enemy heavy tanks like to go, and that's where I reckon the enemy IS-6s are going to go. So uh, it's a tier 8 game, really, really nice matchup, only five tier 8s on either side, a lot of tier 7s and a few tier 6s. So a uh, decent matchup for this tank. And a lot of the enemy team aren't that experienced, so uh, potentially a good game for the 1-1-2 in uh, this particular matchup. And as you can see, I'm actually traveling quite fast. I was even doing uh, cl over 30 kilometers an hour on a slight upward slope. And I do have backup. There's a 110 and a T-29 coming over here. T-21 has been really, really aggressive. And I fire before being fully aimed to get a nice shot in. Nice start to the game. T-21 has decided to hide. So, I do have some backup, but then for some reason, our 110 and our Super Pershing decide to go middle. Um, just bounced a shot in my turret from the T-34-85, so this is good. But I'm being a little bit cautious because I'm expecting the enemy IS-6s to appear, and it seems as if they have gone to three lines. So I notice an SU-100Y is trying to flank. Get a nice shot in, get back into cover. So not giving this guy much to aim at, trying to get a shot, don't have the gun depression. Okay, finally got him. He bounces, I get a shot in, and the Arl was protecting my flank. So, decent start to the game. 1400 damage and uh, one kill. There's a VK3001 here. Thankfully, he's firing HE, but we get a nice shot into his cupola. And this Arl is under pressure, so as much as I'd like to continue poking on this VK, I've got to help the Arl. There's a T-29 here as well, and there's an AMX-12T flanking. So the Arl dies horribly. Super Pershing don't have much to aim at. And my driver is dead. But we take out the T-34-85. He advances too quickly. So uh, I'm up to two kills. 1900 damage. I took a guess that the VK was still there, and indeed he is, so we get another shot into him. And the Super Pershing's gone back to deal with the AMX-12T. Now, I probably should have been more aggressive here. I should have been much, much more aggressive. That T 12T needs help, and I'm just faffing around and taking my time. Unfortunately, I miss a shot on the Super Pershing, but get him on the second time round. That T-32 has also turned around to deal with the 12T. That was really, really bad play in retrospect by me. I haven't watched this game since doing the uh, uh, since playing it. I delay my shot. Really bad shot there. Could have had a kill on the VK. So, um, just the T-29 and myself left here. Some advancing. Want to try and get shots at this VK. Or Super Pershing. And there we go. So, he is able to penetrate me. I came around at a bad angle, but the T-29 has now died, so I'm on my own here. I'm on my own. I'm trying to stay, trying to turn my tank around. I've got a dead driver that I haven't realized. Oh, finally realized my driver's dead. Okay, we turn around. Get a nice shot into the T-32 and bounce a couple of shots. But I'm getting hammered from behind. Thankfully, the VK is only firing HE. But I need to kill this guy before I get flanked. 
So we get another shot in. He's got gun depression. You can see him aiming for my uh, cupolas. Thankfully he misses. So he's advancing. Bounce on the front of his tank, unfortunately. Again, this 175 millimeters of penetration just isn't good enough sometimes. So I'm moving my turret to prevent him from shots at my cupolas. Go for a shot through his uh, machine gun port. VK moves up, but he's firing HE. I'm not too worried about him. It's the Super Pershing is the one that worries me. No shots on the Super Pershing. Managed to bounce a shot. Advancing on this VK, but... I'm going to be exposing my lower glacis. I'm going to be exposing the side of my tank, and I decide, okay, I'll just back down. VK decides to go for it. I take him out for kill number four. And a Super Pershing trying to get me in the lower glacis. Couldn't get the gun depression to do it. So I need to aim for the weak spots, get a nice shot in. And again, now he's panicking. He's shooting me in the upper front plate. So I'm face-hugging him. And again, I'm moving my turret so that he can't get an easy shot. I bounce on his side, unfortunately. And again, I'm moving my turret so he can't get an easy shot. Still trying to shoot me in the upper plate. But he knows what he's doing. He's trying to face-hug as well. I bounce a shot. Oh, this is like two old ladies fighting over a handbag. So again, moving my turret from side to side to prevent him from getting shots. Finally, finally aim carefully, take out the Super Pershing for kill number five. Now in the meantime, the two enemy IS-6s have wrapped up on the two three lines. But I am on five kills, 4,499 damage, and I did make a couple of mistakes. Probably took some damage I didn't need to take, and I probably should have gone to help the 12T a little bit sooner. Also, it took me a while to realize my driver was dead. But there you go, shot at distance, I had the rear of a, or the front of a KV-1S, and the shot fails to penetrate. So, uh, yeah, finally get my top gun on a low health KV-1S, but uh, penetration on this gun really, really drops off at distance. So it is now myself and Artie versus three enemy tanks and Artie. So I'm advancing. I'm aware Artie is still around, so I can't stop. I shoot on the move, get a shot into the IS. Two enemy IS-6s were last spotted heading north, and one of them is capping. IS-6 tracks me, but I finish him off. And uh, I put my tracks back into place before Artie can aim. So kill number seven. I've got my top gun. Now I am after a uh, Radley's. So I'm playing around with the idea of going for uh, enemy RT to get kill number eight. But then I realize enemy team were capping and they've stopped capping. So these two guys are probably coming back. And I think this is my second mistake. I really do think this is my second mistake. IS-6, he's hulled down. Need to hit him in the turret. Unfortunately, fire before being fully aimed. He's firing gold. So I'm moving up into cover, and I'm aware enemy Artie is uh, around. So his gun is inaccurate, my gun is inaccurate. And I was expecting a monster game. Unfortunately, Artie just hit me for 782 damage, allowing the other IS-6 to uh, flank me. And uh, game is pretty much over, so... um. Nothing like Artie to uh, ruin a really, really good game. I uh, tell Artie how I feel in chat. And in the meantime, our Artie has gone south. He's flanking. And game is over. He misses his shot, but... Really, really disappointing end to the game. I made a couple of mistakes. I probably shouldn't have turned back up north to deal with the IS-6s. Probably could have killed the KV-1S one shot earlier. Probably could have helped the AMX-12T or been more aggressive. So I made a lot of mistakes in that game, but it was still a very, very good example of how the armor on the 112 can be good. I was also very lucky that the VK on the enemy team wasn't firing uh, AP. 
Even with the gun he had, he would have been able to pen my rear and sides, but thankfully he decided to fire HE. Didn't do that much damage. But I think it's a fitting game. I think that was a fitting ace tanker game for the 1-1-2. Um, capable of greatness, very, very rarely achieves it, and really, really needs inexperienced players on the enemy team. So as I say, it was the Ace Tanker. I also picked up High Caliber and Top Gun. Really, really, really peed off at the end to the game, but I finished top on XP with 1682. Now, that's more XP than anyone on the winning team. Really, really happy. It was a really, really big game, um, but it didn't feel it, and I'm still a little bit peed off. I died and made mistakes. However, really, really nice XP total. 5,313 damage with 7 kills. Um, so I really, really can't complain that much. Maybe I set my standards too high. 24 shots fired, 23 hits, and 17 penetrations. Uh, the accuracy on the gun isn't good, but I was firing a lot of shots at close range. Penetration is not good, and I think you can see it from that. Uh, I received 25 hits. 15 of them were bounces, 10 were penetrations, but... Uh, yeah, the armor works. It just needs to fight against inexperienced players. I took uh, 4,120 damage blocked by armor, 3 vehicles spotted, 8 damaged, 7 destroyed, and did 1,054 assistance damage. I picked up 121,000 credits with a premium account for that uh, particular game. It's a tier 8 premium. It's going to make you money. Uh, you're usually not going to make that much money in this tank. Uh, basically, you need to have really, really big games. And I just don't think the 112 is capable of having really, really big games on a consistent basis. Um, but 2,553 XP. It wasn't my first game of the day. This is another one of these tanks where I sat down and said, Listen, I'm just going to play four, five, six games in this tank in a row. See if I can get the ace tanker. And thankfully, I able to. I was able to manage it. So I really, really can't recommend the 112. It's a tank that's way too situational. Um, you can have good games in it. You can have monster games in it. But I think they don't happen frequently enough to warrant this tank. Um, it will make money, but then every other tier 8 premium will also make you money. Um, this tank really is difficult to play. It's a tank you can't side scrape in. It's a tank you can't go hull down in. It's a tank where you can't hide all your weak spots at the same time. It's a tank that performs really, really badly when you're outnumbered. Um, it might be decent for holding a choke point, but it's another one of these tanks where if you're up against two or three tanks and they can get to your sides and rear, you're going to die really, really quickly. The gun is terrible, bad accuracy, bad aim time, bad penetration, terrible gun depression. It's... I really, really can't recommend the 112. I, I'm sorry, I know other streamers and other players recommend it and think it's a great tank. I really can't. And I can't understand how those very same streamers who recommend you buying the 112 as it's the best tier 8 premium tank can hate the 113. They all seem to dislike the 113, but they love the 112. Um, they dislike the 113 for exactly the same reasons. Um, it goes on fire, has really, really weak side and rear armor, has a really, really weak lower glacis, and has a terrible gun. So I really don't understand how people can say, buy the 112, it's a great tank, and don't bother grinding to the 113 because it's a terrible tank. Um, the two tanks are terrible for exactly the same reasons. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.